and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to your program director for the day, star of both radio and television, Mr. Jeremy Max. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, Buti Manimela, Deputy Minister in the Presidency for Planning, Performance, Monitoring, Evaluation and Administration, special delegates, guests, ladies and gentlemen, speakers, it is good to see you, it is good to be with you again. In the early hours, ladies and gentlemen, of Monday morning, we lost an icon in the apartheid struggle. Please could I ask you to be upstanding, to observe a moment's silence for Ahmed Katrada. He was an icon, a gentleman, and a man of principle. Please be seated. Well, ladies and gentlemen, just a moment or two ago, you saw uh, Thais van Sale, Chief Executive Officer of the Franchise Co., the Franchise Division in Pretoria. We were out there early this morning filming him getting into his car. Okay. I understand that we're now awaiting the imminent arrival of uh, Mr. Van Zale. I wonder team at the back there, if it's possible to cross to our special tracker drone to see whether he has arrived or not. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Taste Van Sale, uh, if I could ask you to come through after that very quick arrival from the entrance to here. Uh, I think we can, we can track him in. Taste, where are you? And I think along with, uh, along with Robert Arendser, MD of the Cape Media Corporation. I think they're arriving. I can see through the back there. There they come. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Taste Van Sale. He's your host today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeremy Max, thank you very much for the announcement as well. And yes, uh, let me tell you the story about the Maserati. Not too bad for yourself, Mr. Max, but did you see the Max on that car? Wow. <laughs> so yes, uh, let's get the proceedings on the go today. I think uh, firstly of all, I would like to just thank myself, a little bit of people here that made this all possible. I think number one, I would like to thank God for giving us this opportunity to be here this morning, all of us. And of course, secondly, I would like to also thank my wife and my kids for all their support and then my team. I mean, without my team, this couldn't have been possible. Thank you for all the hard work, guys. We, are, we, we really worked hard to, here today to get to this stage in any ways. But thank you very much for the tour. And then I would like to um, especially thank the leadership guys, uh, the guys from Cape Media, to the MD, Robert, you guys did an amazing job. I think uh, let's give them a hand as well. <laughs> Leaders Convention in partnership with the Franchise Co. And it's an exciting time for us as we continue to grow and adapt, remaining always um, adaptable, motivated, and responsive. Our organization is uh, co confronting a time of many changes, and we're meeting these changes during a time of large na nationwide and global change. I'd like to give you an idea of what we can expect and what we hope to achieve over the next few hours. We will be announcing our latest brand into the franchising industry 
our vision moving into Africa and to start the Franchising Your Success mentorship program. I'd like to thank each of you for attending our conference and bringing your expertise to, our, to this gathering. As you are, you are organizing leaders uh, you, uh, you, with your knowledge and also with uh, the overwhelming power that you're also bringing towards this conference, I would like to thank you as well for attending here and please enjoy the day with us. Please take everything in and this day is for you. Like, like the late Ahmed Katrada said, the hardest thing to open is a closed mind. Enjoy your day. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Jeremy. And uh, greetings to uh, Thais van Zale. I must uh, confess that I was approached to make that grand entrance with the Maserati. But because of the scrutiny subjected to the relationship between politicians and cars. <laughs> I opted to let it pass. <laughs> it gives me a great pleasure to address uh, you this morning at the uh, Tomorrow's Leaders Convention 2017. I've been asked to speak about a very difficult theme today, which is the subject of leadership. And you may look at me by virtue of the position I occupy, and you may conclude that I'm a leader. But the subject of leadership is difficult because I, too, am learning continuously. And that leadership in itself is an evolving subject. It is sometimes impulsive. Sometimes we lead by chance. Sometimes we get into autopilot. But at times, we do that which is required by the moment and challenges that we are confronted with. As South Africa recently hosted the Global Entrepreneurship Conference, we were reminded that entrepreneurial leadership is needed in our society today. And entrepreneurial leadership is characterized by ingenuity, risk-taking, thinking outside of the box, and most importantly, innovation. And of course, a great honor for me to be here to talk entrepreneurship to tomorrow's leaders, because I think entrepreneurship is going to solve all of South Africa's problems, and I know it's a huge cliche. I remember when I started the Creative Council, I needed 100,000 rand to start the business. And at the time, I was willing to sell 50% of the business to anyone who would give me 100,000 rand. No one would give me 100,000 rand. I was uninvestable. Had someone given me 100,000 rand, 15 years later, the 100,000 rand would have been with 750 million rand. But no one would give me 100,000 rand because I was uninvestable. Yeah. So I sold my business last year, and it's allowed me an amazing opportunity to do stuff that I really love, and that is to nurture entrepreneurship in South Africa. And in that vein, what I've done is I've set up a whole lot of funds and incubators, and I've pledged 50 million rand of my own money to furthering entrepreneurship in South Africa. Particularly, <laughs> thank you, particularly young black entrepreneurs in South Africa. So I do a talk, and I do a talk at a, at a conference called Suits and Sneakers. It was a talk for about 3,000 young entrepreneurs. And I sit down with them, and I do a talk, and the talk is called Be Like the Dog. Why Be Like the Dog? Because the one quality that all entrepreneurs have, or need to have if they're going to survive, is they need to be like the dog. What do I mean? Have you ever seen a dog when it's chasing another dog for the purpose of... <laughs> Don't make me say it. You've seen that. Now, you can walk up to the dog with a rake, with a hose pipe, with water. That dog has one thing on its mind. It's going. So I believe that the one quality that all entrepreneurs need to have if they're going to succeed is they need to be like the dog. You are here on earth to unearth what you are on earth for. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that. You are here on earth to unearth what on earth you are here for. You don't have to be Kennedy to build libraries, but you can supply books that contribute to the shelves. And what I can say to you today is small individual deeds 
result in collective accomplishments. Your character, which is a distinctive nature, is your business model. <laughs> your character being a distinctive nature, meaning something that sets you apart from the rest, is actually your business model. I don't care how much your net asset value might be, but if you don't have a character and a business model that has the ability to generate janapreneurs, meaning legacy-oriented projects, that you are wasting your time in the industry that you're in. Now, I'm going to give you three critical criteria to ensure that your character is shaped well enough to generate results and to generate an income in your business. And this is based on the following premises. First, the environmental self-image. Second, developing competence to feed your confidence. And thirdly, true transformation. So the title of this talk is The Precariat, Leadership in Precarious Times. And I'm going to talk about the phenomenon that fueled Trump's success and drove Brexit. It's post-industrial, it's post-Marxist, post-colonial, and post-liberal. It's a global phenomenon that may also make or break business and society in South Africa. It's a phenomenon that demands that we all think in new ways about how we work and lead. I think if we look at the world, if we look at our continent, if we look at South Africa, our country, then it's very clear that we are in need, I believe, desperately in need of a different breed, a different kind of leader. And that different kind of leader is what we in Future Leaders Africa and our umbrella company, Future Leaders Development, call inside-out, principle-based leadership. Because let me say this, um, we believe that just as we are warmed by the fire and not the smoke of the fire, so our households, our communities, our work organizations, our societies, our nations are warmed and made effective by authentic, inside-out, principle-based leadership. Leadership is not about personal achievements and to be the high performer. It goes beyond performance. Leadership is not about being the expert. It goes beyond expertise. Leadership is not about climbing the ladder of success. It's not about climbing that ladder towards more power and more, or more status. It is beyond climbing ladders. Leadership is not even about skills. It goes beyond skills. It's not about knowledge. It goes beyond knowledge. In fact, what it is, it is the expression of your whole self to effect good things in and through others. At the age of 19, started with 350. And that's how I get it. And when I get invited for me to come and speak about who is the leader, I could tell you one thing. What I do, I didn't have a pen and paper. It was by pure default. I didn't think I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I was moved by passion. I was moved by discomfort. And you know what? And I say this to anybody. Opportunities are everywhere. What moves you? Around here, there's so much opportunity. We can only be moved by what it is discomfort on us. That's an opportunity right there. Others might not see it. And don't let people overtalk you from what you're going to achieve. No one was born great. Every one of us that are here, we have a story to tell. Guess what? You also sitting down there, you got your own story to tell. No one. Don't, don't, tell, don't let the world change you to say there's certain people with great powers and whatnot. We were all born great. No one, there was no specific person, white, black, Indian, whatever color, that you said you were born great. We were all born the same. Um, I just want to quickly start off by first saying that I'm not a motivational speaker. I think that was done this morning and it was an amazing job. Uh, is there anybody in the room that is not motivated at this stage? Please raise your hands for us. Otherwise, I'll have to put on my jacket again and motivate you. 
All right, and uh, that's going to take us until about 4 o'clock this afternoon. I always believe that if, if you don't actually make people believe around you what you believe in, then you're not going to get you know, to, to the point that you want to be in a few years or within a generation or within your company, whatever the case might be. So lead by examples and others will tend to follow. That is what I do believe in. Um, I also believe in don't outsource your leadership, like previous speakers also said here today. All right. So you have to do it everything yourself. And that's, that's, that's a very important aspect as well by being a true leader, is that you need to do a lot of things yourself because you can't just leave everything for somebody else to do on your behalf. So leadership can't be outsourced in any way. One thing about leadership as well, and one thing about good success, is not always to share all of your ideas in front of people. Keep some of the things close to your heart as well. And then when the time is right, then those things can be implemented and you can build on them. Okay. Uh, I always believe uh, uh, in the leadership principle of an eagle. Every time I'm, I'm faced with any challenges, that I apply that leadership principle because it assists all of us, whether in your private life or in your business, to rise above any challenges. So one of the principles uh, that is drawn from the eagle is that failure or limitation of the past have no control over greatness in you. All things are possible. So what does it mean is that don't wait for everybody to believe in your ability and dreams. Never design your life like a garden where anyone can walk in and walk out. Design it like a sky where everybody or everyone aspire to reach. Well, we know that South Africa is a, is a growing economy, so quite a lot of young people, they want courses that will make them be part of this growing economy. So that's why we are here to assist them and give them the right information they are looking for. Um, for me, leadership is, um, you know, someone who's very authentic. You know, you need to be authentic about who you are. Um, leadership for me is integrity. Leadership for me is loyalty. Leadership for me is um, giving back, you know, making a difference in people's lives. Um, that's a very nice question, Jeremy. Thank you so much. And I think um, just as Ponzo has said, authenticity is one of the most important things in life because we don't really know who we are most of the times. And so we Speak base for yourself, our... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we base our confidence on titles, on things, on mm. what we think success is, and not really trying to be who we really are in the essence of who we are. So we all need to identify why am I here, what am I here to do, and how does it again serve me as a person? And I think, um, I like that you asked that question because I think life is not um, smooth or plain sailing, you know? Mm. It's cyclical. Mm. And um, I think all of us sitting here um, have actually experienced tough times in life. And what's helped me as a leader is to just, um, to know what my passion and my mission is. Reputation matters in everything that you do because you want to be associated with um, companies and organizations and brands that reflect your values. And to use the same word that was used earlier, authenticity, integrity, those are words that get thrown around a lot. And reputation is built over time. So you have to, it's important because you want to be viewed in a specific way. Producing results is very important. So there, there are no short corners. You need, as you rightly said, you need to put in the hours. Within three years, the unemployment rate has grown from 25 to 28%. As you into as you fair to tell the truth. Sometimes you are not a trick. You are nothing. Lambsans. Now, One Day Leader is a youth reality television program that is every Monday on SABC 1 at half past four. And what it seeks to do, it takes six of what they consider the best young leaders all over the country, and they put them together to debate issues such as that of Tembeli. I think what I love the most about the show is that we not only have a voice to 
bring in our solutions or to, to really have an impact on how things can change. But what I love the most is how we are able to immerse ourselves into any and every single socioeconomic issue and we're able to face the realities because I feel like any change comes best when the reality is, is met from the ground level up. So I think with more shows like these, we're able to not only groom young leaders like myself, but we're also able to get young people understanding the issues we really face and, and, and how we can go about finding innovative solutions to figure out these problems. So on One Day Leader, we deal with a lot of societal issues, one of them that affect um, young people, which is the drug of Nyaope. And we actually made one of our um, uh, case studies, we dealt with Mbali and her daughter, which is a family that's struggling because of this drug that's um, exploited and abused them as a family. So what we did is to make Mbali believe that a future without drugs is possible. Unoglunga wa mpaleli nwati, wa mchela njinga kukonke kuti, yenu ya fana nukutu umuto ngina mama, wabaga sami nzelu, tongapu ya pe, mabanga nbake baya mtlega. For this task, uh, since we were asked to um, immerse ourselves in different cultures, I see a couple of challenges, me being Muslim. Um, we might be required to taste certain foods, um, and knowing me, everything is halal. But when we look at tribalism in South Africa, um, we must realize that this is something that was implanted in the minds, in our minds. Um, as African people, we're not supposed to be divided. Yes, we're supposed to um, be proud of our regions, but that should never overstep the next person. So, a couple of things that are actually probably worrying me for the next five years is where we're going as a country, will there be opportunities for me to pursue everything that I'm passionate about? Are students going to get an opportunity to pursue their uh, studies beyond um, the villages that they're coming from? Um, are we going to have um, an environment that is enabling for entrepreneurs, for example, to pursue their passion as well? So those are probably like few things that actually worry me as a person who is approaching 30. Uh, my sign is about um, no child deserves to go to school without shoes. Um, last day I took a gen to Devon with food. I have my team here. We walk from Johannesburg to Devon raising 3,000 school shoes. Where's your team? Uh, my team. Can stand, they stand up, up your up? team. Let's see. You, you all worked up. You're a team member. Well done, guys. Okay, what did you do? Um, our mission is to raise uh, 3,000 school shoes and 500 sanitary pads. So, uh, Hashtag South Africa um, is a company I started and founded back in 2011. Um, I was actually in, in Bible school at the time, and I, and I was sitting there instead of listening to a lecture, obviously, uh, and thinking, how can we look at promoting South Africa rather than uh, a, a, like a spray of can or food or washing powder? And then I just wrote down a hashtag, and then I wrote down South Africa, and then I just packed my bags, left, and started unpacking a strategy. Uh, 11th of November 2011, National Development Plan was written and I found out, wow, the country's got a benchmark idea for the year 2030. Let me look and try to build myself around that. So, the Threaded Man um, is Africa's largest fashion and lifestyle portal that speaks to close to a million people every single month. Um, the Threaded Man is also an agency that specializes in teaching brands within the fashion and lifestyle space how to communicate effectively to African millennials. But I'm um, 23 years old. I founded The Threaded Man five years ago and I was in matric. It's now valued at 10 million rands. Wow. So, so I, I have a business as well. It's called um, WTG Media House. I'm the CEO of that business. I started this business um, primarily first to, to, to try and get into doing ads and, and things like that. So now we do ads for corporate clients and so on. But it, what it also does is um, it, it also trains young people and also older people really who want to get into voice of artistry, presenting and things like that as well. Because there's a lot of young people who, because of things like TV, we had new dreams, but we had no place to exercise those dreams. And that becomes a, a really frustrating thing. And it was one for me as well, coming from a very small town. Um, and the other part that brings me here is because I, I have a show 
a radio show on Cliff Central. It's called Unplugged and In Charge, and it's for the youth, especially people exactly like this, people who are um, unplugged from all the excuses that we can make about why we're not where we want to be in life, but they are in charge of making South Africa a better place, in charge of their futures as well, and in charge of really just um, being the change that they want to see around the world as well. Yeah. And we are from the JVR Africa Group, um, passionate about people development, and that's really what we do uh, in all spheres. Um, we're a group of four different companies focusing on different areas of people development, very passionate about youth development and leadership development. And but you're sitting here because you are deemed successful. What, what's, what has been the secret of your journey? I think it's hard work, my friend. Hard work, perseverance, pushing hard, in spite of all the obstacles that comes our own way. <laughs> uh, what am I most afraid of? Mm is not realizing, I think, people always talk about your potential and you think, will I fulfill or, uh, you know, live up to my greatest potential? Am I self-sabotaging in any way? What am I doing to stand in my own way? Do I believe that I can actually achieve what I want? Do I believe I deserve it? Uh, what, what happens when inspiration doesn't come? I think that's when the schooling kicks in. Mm. Um, for, for anyone who's, you know, if there are any authors here, you will know that you'll get inspired for the first few pages and then you've got to finish the book. So right there and then experience then plays a role and if you've got education, that plays a role as well. Sure. I think I'm, I'm myself in that in everything that I do, I try to not look at what everybody else is doing, so not allow it to kind of influence my output. So I think honestly, people can see when you're lying, people can see when you're not being yourself or when you're pretending. So I think authenticity is very important for me. How do I deal with pressure? You see, what I do is, the, the best part about what I do is I get to, to face my fears every time I, I stand on stage because people don't realize that most comedians are afraid of people afraid to stand in front of people and perform. So how do I deal with pressure? That two minutes before you get on stage, uh, that's, that's the best time ever. Like everything just shuts off. Um, you go through your, your material in your head, you are in, you, you literally your hands are sweating, you know, there's butterflies and stuff, and then you hear your name being called out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, coming up on stage, do me so Lindy. The minute you step on stage, it's gone. It's a point of no return. We're up to. Upstairs, ladies and gentlemen, to the assembly room. I'll make a few remarks of welcome, and then uh, the bar is open. Uh, again, that uh, ends the uh, tomorrow's, tomorrow's Leaders Convention 2017. Thank you to the Franchise Co., most importantly, to the most important people in the room. Thank you to you.